Hi everybody, this is going to be a quick video uh, tutorial for week one, assignment two. So for this assignment, there are templates available on the assignment page, so go ahead and download that. This is the uh, tutorial to show you how to do this in Photoshop. I typically use Illustrator for this class, and I think it's a little bit easier for what we're doing. But in case you want to try this in Photoshop, or in case you have access to only Photoshop, or you know, you're more comfortable with the program, I thought this video tutorial may help. So with this template downloaded and opened in Photoshop, the first thing that I want to do is grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle the same length as the tints progression here. Okay. Um, so with that rectangle, what I'm planning on doing is creating a gradient from one color, one parent hue, all the way to white and that will be tints. And so I have to rasterize that rectangle shape. Going over to my layer palette, what I can do is just option click on the layer and then up to rasterize layer. And then I want to make sure that I'm locking the layer and not with this one that will lock the entire layer. With this icon right here, just go ahead and click on that. So now I need to select some uh, colors basically to work with in my gradient. And we already said that we're going to do a parent hue and move that all the way to white. So Let's go and get this open. And here on the uh, color sliders, you can choose you know, any of these, but let's work in RGB. So grab your RGB sliders. And we have the foreground hue here. I want that to remain as blue. And then moving to this background hue, I would like that to be white since we're working in tints. So turn this all the way up. Each of these sliders all the way up will produce white. And do you see this little light gray uh, square around that background hue? We want that to be on the foreground color. So let's do that. Okay, we're ready for the gradient here. Um, we have rasterized the layer and we have selected our colors. So we'll go over to this gradient tool, which is nested here. Sometimes it's underneath the paint bucket tool if you're looking for it. Make sure you um, look for that and select that. And now that we have that selected, you can see that we now have this option up here on the top toolbar. So we'll click on that and make sure that the gradient is set up correctly. Okay, this goes from uh, the pure hue of blue all the way to white. And we want to make sure that the preset, the first preset is selected. And then go ahead and click OK on that. And basically drawing the gradient in is just clicking and dragging. So you just go ahead and click on one end and drag to the other. And it'll begin with blue and end with white. We need to go back to our background layer, that template layer. And now we need to sample the color. Using a keyboard shortcut of just the letter I, I can get my eyedropper. And I can sample the color directly above the center of this box that I want to fill in. And then using the keyboard shortcut of G, will bring me to my paint bucket tool, hopefully. Um, and what I can do is just dump that color in. So going through, I can sample the color, dump the color. Go right above the center of the square, sample, and dump the color. So it's pretty easy. Once you um, get the gradient going and you have everything set up, you know, all you're doing then is just sampling and you want to do that right above the middle of the square and just drop the color in. I know that there's many ways to use Photoshop to complete this assignment and if you're really comfortable with the program, feel free to use your own method. People do this numerically. They'll adjust uh, the, you know, saturation levels of the color, etc. But I feel like this is a pretty easy way to go through this. Now, the cool thing about this is that we've created this gradient and all we need to do is grab the move tool. Okay, we can move it down here and we could complete the shades progression. And shades is just the color all the way to black. So, you know, going through this, I wanna make sure that I have the blue as the foreground color here. And then I want the background color, I'm gonna go back to my RGB sliders, to be black. We'll turn every slider all the way down and that's gonna be black. And now I'm ready again, right away, for um, the gradient to come in here. So I'll just select that gradient and draw my line again. And that changes the color appropriately. I would go through and sample and drop all the colors into place. But I wanna show you two more things before I go. So 
Using this move tool, I'm going to drag this down, and this is tones progressing to a lighter value. And that just means that we're going to go from the blue to a gray that is lighter in value than that blue parent color. But how do you tell? How do you tell how dark or light the value of this blue is? Well, one way you can do it is just by selecting the color and then going over here to the drop down menu on your color sliders. You can basically open the grayscale slider and it'll show you the value of that gray or of that blue um, in terms of its corresponding gray value. And with that background color selected, you can do it on this slider. Uh, it's going to progress to a lighter value, so you want to make sure you go lighter than that 80% gray, which describes the blue hue. And so now that we have these two, whoops, these two colors uh, as our foreground and background swatch colors, I can go back to the gradient tool, redraw the gradient, and then sample the colors for tones progressing to a lighter value. Tones progressing to a darker value would be exactly the same thing, but we're going to be moving towards a gray that is darker than the parent hue, in this case 80%, and tones maintaining a constant value will go to the same value of that parent hue. And in this case it's 80%, but remember that if you are, if you're using a different color, say you're using, um, let's say, this cyan color. Uh, it's not going to be an 80% gray. That's a 16% gray. So they vary quite a bit in terms of their corresponding values. Make sure you're using the sliders to get a sense of how dark or light the corresponding gray should be. Uh, and then finally, before you submit this, after everything's filled out, you know, your entire uh, exercise is filled in, you want to delete that rectangle layer for presentation. Don't include that in the final. Uh, that you upload into the classroom. So just go ahead and drag that to the garbage and everything will be filled in. Save it with your last name, your first name, the week and assignment number, and you're all set. So I hope this helps and if you have any questions, let me know.